Jim Clark, Visual Arts Manager at Hopkins Center for the Arts. Uh, today we're at Gallery Imagine in Suite 183 at the Northrop King Building in Northeast Minneapolis. I'm here speaking with artist Tom Dimmick in support of his exhibition Boats, Wind and Sea uh, on view at the Hopkins Center for the Arts. Tom, hello. Hi. Thanks for having us out here. This is Glad new for us. Glad you could make it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so tell us about uh, Gallery Imagine uh, uh, a bit, and then we'll talk about your work and okay. process. Well, we started the gallery, a, a bunch of us, um, when they started breaking up spaces <clears throat> about 10 years ago. Okay. And then we developed it into this with, uh, with um, these um, walls and partitions. Mm -hmm. And we, at the time, we had six artists. And because of COVID and 2020, uh, two, three of them dropped out. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that the three of us could handle it ourselves and, and enjoy having the extra room and space. And it's really been, really been great because I have my space here. And then I have a little space back in the corner and same with Mary Ann, she's over there. So all three of us are award-winning artists. And uh, we um, Could rotate. you tell us the three artists again? Uh -huh. uh, Mary Ann Morgan, which she is, she's the only one that isn't a plein air painter. Sure. Um, she hates painting outdoors. Sometimes I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then Greg Lecker is uh, in here too, and he he's, uh, has the the largest areas, but then, you know, he's well deserving of that, so. Um, and we show on regular basis, we, um, we rotate sitting the gallery on Saturdays, and then we are always here on first Thursdays from, uh, from five to nine, and Saturdays from noon to four, generally, sometimes longer. And then there's two big major events, uh, Art of World and Art Attack. And there's they're a three day weekend type thing, and so we're we're here, and that's those are big days. And then we have what they call Northrop King Nights, which sometimes are quarterly, but they're they're not regularly scheduled. Sure. But you participate in all the yes. events and activities. Yes, we yeah. we're always open, and then um, and then but this is basically a gallery space, and so we work from our own studios. Okay. Oh. In, uh, do you keep your studio then at your home? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a, we have a, uh, a, a walkout, mm -hmm. um, and onto a, that over, that looks into the backyard, which is a lake. Yeah. Which is, you know, a really great setting. And, uh, sometimes I just wind up painting out there. Mm -hmm. So. Awesome. Doing, doing landscape painting. So. Sure. Uh, Tom, uh, you identify as a plein air painter, mm -hmm. uh, which means to paint outside. outside. Yeah. Um, do uh, the entirety, uh, is the entirety of your body of work plein air work, or do you also do, I do. Uh, studio paintings? I do a lot of studio yeah. paintings also. Okay. Um, there was a period in, in time that I was doing um, maybe 10 or 12 paint outs a year. And uh, I just had barely enough time to bring my stuff back, and, um, and then I was out again. So my studio became a warehouse of paintings that I was doing, working on. Mm -hmm. um, with COVID, and um, I've been doing a lot more studio work. And I'll take basically I'll take some of these pieces that I've done outdoors and do larger versions of those, mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing, but uh, they're mostly impressionistic quality. Although I do like to dabble in other medium and other styles. Yeah. So um, abstract and, you know, and that kind of thing, so. Interesting, the, the majority of works uh, in your exhibition at the center are oil, but there's, mm -hmm. um, there's a watercolor mm -hmm. and there's a casino painting as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about uh, medium choice. It, because the majority of those paintings are oil, is that your favorite medium? It pretty much is, yeah. yes. Um, I, 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 I enjoy, and I've done different styles. I've even done sumi Chinese painting, mm -hmm. Japanese painting. 
painting. And I like that also, but it doesn't feel natural as being a, a Westerner. So sure. I, I kind of, I do that because I, I like the style and I kind of grew up in it when I was a child. I yeah. lived in Cal Southern California and there was a lot of that influence. My mom was really, um, collected a lot of a lot of that but um sure. so I, I do i do go from one other one thing to another watercolors and i've always had casein paints with me and um i also do mono prints mm -hmm. and so the, all these different styles and watercolor is one of my favorite one of my favorite uh, medium sure. too so um, and can you uh, tell our viewers a bit about casein and that it's a, it's a less um, ubiquitous uh, um, medium? Yeah. I, I think a lot of folks don't know uh, what it is. Mm -hmm. um, could you speak to that? Yeah, it's a, it's a water-based medium. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very old. Uh, it's a milk and cheese derived in the extractions yeah. Yeah, the yeah. for the medium mm -hmm. to hold the pigment. And, um, and it was, it's basically a precursor to acrylics, yeah. actually, from what I understand. And uh, it's, you can manipulate it a little bit after you've painted it within a couple hours or so, but after that it's, it dries rock solid. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the beauty of casein. It, it dries flat. So there's no shine or gloss or glaze or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's a nice medium. I, li I like to use it. Um, it's more of um, I have, it's more of a graphic style of painting that too. Mm -hmm. But just the way the, the paint lays down and stuff like that. So. In um, quick, quicker drying than oil, so it's mm -hmm. uh, kind of snappy yeah. in process. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, I think, uh, an interesting point to be made, it, it's a watercolor in that it's water soluble, but it dries opaque, unlike mm -hmm. traditional watercolor. Right, yeah. traditional watercolor is, is, is uh, well, uh, it's from what I understand, back in the day, they used a lot of um, gum arabic, I think, which mm -hmm. solidified it to a point where they could mount it unglazed. Mm -hmm. um, so, but after a while, I don't know what happened with it. Somewhere along the line, they started putting glass over it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was, um, it, it's, it's, for, for me, for plain air painting, watercolor is a problem because you usually have to frame them right there. Um, and you don't have necessarily the facilities, so you're out in the woods, yeah, <laughs> right, right, putting right. glass and mat, and, you know, yeah. together. And, and a lot of times you'll get bugs in them and mm -hmm. dust and stuff. So it's not a very um, clean environment to do that in. Yeah. So it just got to be too much of a hassle. So I, I, I see slave my watercolor paintings for in the studio, basically. Sure. So. Um. Working plein air, do you have a favorite uh, location or do you, how, do you, how do you arrive at or choose your locations? Well, most of the time I, I go out in you know, plein air competition. So okay. it's that location, it's either in Cook County or it's in this time in Ottertail County mm -hmm. um, and other places too, you know, Hopkins and, or not Hopkins, but Hudson mm -hmm. and uh, so on and so forth, but um, I prefer um, well, it, it, just about any place really. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's whatever catches your eye, and you know, you thought it's be a nice spot to paint. Sure. Like so, um, related to selection of locale uh, and subject matter, um, boats, wind, and sea. Mm -hmm. um, it has that unifying theme, and it's it's nautical. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most assertive subject in the show are the boats, mm -hmm. um, and maybe it's their form, um, the the way you approach them. Mm -hmm. um, why boats? Are are you a sailor? I, no. I well, I I I, I 
classify myself as a dry dock sailor without a boat. And, but I've done a lot of sailing in my life. Yeah. Uh, usually borrowed or rented boats. Okay. And, uh, or something, my, my dad, my brothers used to build boats and, and sailing boats and catamarans and all sorts of stuff, yeah. you know, so. Um, so that's how I got started with all that. And then being in the Navy, um, I was always attracted to sea anyway. And so um, that's what got me into doing a lot of boats. And, uh, but I, I want to do other things. And so when I go out and paint like a plein air event, mm -hmm. like say a Grand Marais, yeah. I'm going to go out and paint some landscapes and I'll come back with a boat. <laughs> you know, so, you know, <laughs> they, so, they just call yeah, you. They call me. You yeah. know, I, I can't help it. So, yeah. But, um, um, but I, I do like you know, other subjects and stuff too. So it just, you know, it just really depends on what I'm, where I'm at and the time I'm doing it, so. Well, you have uh, a great variety of subjects on view here uh, mm -hmm. in the gallery, um, including portraits, mm -hmm. a very yeah, uh, a timely self-portrait. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Besides boats, um, is it what is there any other subject matter that that draws you back time and time again? Um, water features, uh, landscapes, basically forests. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, I was a, up in uh, Battle Lake this last. Well, that was a different kind of uh, plein air event because the opening was in mid August and the close was at the end of September. So you could go up and paint and everything. So, um, so I did that one. I did, a, uh, and I would, uh, painted a woodland scene, mm -hmm. and that won an award. So you know, but it was just something about the light and the way the trees were reacting to the light and yeah. the, you know the shadows and stuff. And so that's usually kind of what draws me into things to paint. These. Um plein air competitions, uh, the paint house, is there um, a governing body for those or are those each independent uh, events? They're, well, they're, they're uh, like in Cook County for the, plain, the Grand Marais plein air event, um, Outdoor Painters of Minnesota um, kind of runs that now. The, um, I'm not sure which entity had that before. Mm -hmm. uh, they they decided they didn't want to do it, but it was such a great place to paint. Yeah, I mean, just you know, stunning. Yeah, if I was 40 years younger, I'd move there. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it's just great. Um, but that's but there's no overarching, you know, state type thing, mm -hmm. you know, or anything or whatever. It's it's basically individual communities. Like uh, one of the one of the planner events they had in uh, Duluth, yeah, um, a few years ago, and fortunately they stopped doing it. I really love, but funny thing about Duluth was it's just a it's just a bump in the road to go to Grand Marais, yeah. basically. You just drove right through. Um, but having a planner event there forced you to get out and paint the city in the surrounding area, and that's when I fell in love with Duluth. Yeah. I mean, it's a fantastic town. Oh yeah. Um, unfortunately, they stopped, you know, painting mm. or stopped the, the uh, plein air. But uh, and then in, um, but they're all over. But the, most of the communities, mm -hmm. they run them and you know have that stuff. If uh, if a person wanted to get engaged with uh, the plein air community and maybe participate in some of these competitions, mm -hmm. what would you recommend? Um, well, I think probably uh, most of them, most arts organizations don't really have um, plein air events of one kind or another. They, have, they may have uh, a group that will set up outdoor painting on a weekly basis like uh, um, the North Star Watercolor Society will do that during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, but outdoor painters in Minnesota are the ones you would you would contact for, yeah. for that. And the nice thing about that organization is there's a, a lot of talented people, experienced artists, and a lot of newcomers. 
and they kind of help bring along some of those newcomers. It's pretty nice. And they have different programs yeah. for you know, all that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a good organization to belong to. Yeah. And most, a lot of states do have those. Like there's Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin has, uh, I'm not sure what's the, the Wisconsin Plain Air, something like that, Wee Papa, I think they call it. Hmm. And Indiana, um, and so different states and stuff. But then the, the big one is Papa, hmm. which is Plain Air, Ameri Plain Air Painters of, of America. Okay. And that's a national one. And then there's um, uh, the, American Impressionist Society, so so there's big organizations like that to do that. But you're a member of OPM, yeah. mm -hmm. Outdoor Painters. Yeah. Also. Yeah. yeah, so I've been a member for like 12, 14 years, something like that now. What other artists do you admire or inspire you or do you gain influence from? Well, um, initially um, was Robert Henry. Okay. And the, the school of eight. Uh, when I was in high school, in uh, in Omaha, we uh, a friend of mine and I were the only painters. There were, wasn't really a, uh, an art class yeah. to speak of, but we latched onto the the art spirit and um, just started checking things out. We started painting, uh, copying um, members of that group sure. and then we found out that they well they they went out and painted outdoors yeah and so we went out and painted along the river and you know, the school and stuff so that's where i got introduced to plein air painting back in high school is that right yeah so Fantastic. it took me quite a few years to get really back into a full full ke you know, sure. kettle but um i did off and on you know, i would paint when i go outside and yeah. paint but not to the degree I'm doing now, so. Tell us about uh, painting outside and how one even approaches that. It's like so it varied. Even, yeah. You know, how do you approach it? Well, I, I, I basically, um, I'll go around looking at different places that might, you know, scenes, things, mm -hmm. if I'm out. And uh, I, if I'm pretty sure of where I'm going, I'll carry my uh, my paint box and you know and, and tools with me, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'll, I'll find it. Uh, um, there's a heavy uh, viewfinder that has a. In fact, I, I will. I always carry it with me because you never know. Yeah. Um, so there's a viewfinder here. And it's pretty good, and it gives different sizes, and so you just line it up and you know get that. Sure. Um, I gen Some gen folks. And that, yeah. I can do that if I'm not, you know. <laughs> right, but right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same kind of thing. And then from there, you know, you kind of figure out where the thirds are, because I go by thirds and okay. the designs and how the you know, scene moves around and just, you know, kind of design the scene. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll do a sketch um, and then with the proportions and then uh, value, I'll think of three values, light, dark, and light, medium, and, and black, mm -hmm. and I'll try and, you know, design it somewhat that way with those in mind, um, because one of my other mentors was uh, Howard Pyle, who was a, the father of American illustration. illustration. Yeah. And I was an illustrator for a long time, so. Okay. So that's how I got, got going. Mm -hmm. um, another influence was, uh, is, uh, uh, Harvey Dunn and um, Thomas Hart Benton, which don't have anything really to do with a lot of what I do, sure. but they're all kind of illustrators, so that's where that, that came from. Yeah. And then um, the um, uh, more, more modern ones, um, people, um, Hawthorne and, and those, those guys in that group. So. Mm -hmm. But I, it's, there's, they're kind of there. You know, Wherever I'm at at the time, I look for that influence. Sure. Help, so, once you've you found the location, you've identified a subject, you've used your viewfinder. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you need 
uh, uh, some kind of substrate or ground on yeah. which to paint. And, you know, we think about painters as having big canvases and mm -hmm. a model or a lot of people work from photographs nowadays, but you're out in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, how do you manage that? Can you tell us a bit about your tools? Well, uh, this is this is a, a Soltech, and I've been using Soltex for about five, six years, I think. This is my the second easel one. is this a Soltech. Is, is yeah. easel, yeah. and it's all complete. And it closes and collapses, and it has a nice, nice spot to put your paints and brushes. Generally, I have I when I'm going out painting, um, and I know I'm going to be carrying this for a while. Um, I usually just have three three or four colors mm -hmm. in my brushes and stuff. And then the backpack with my extra things like paper towels and stuff like that. With your color, uh, and, and partially I imagine because you need to pack fairly light, mm -hmm. uh, how does that drive your philosophy of color? Or at it, all? It doesn't, it doesn't really, I mean, you're mixing yeah. all the colors derived from those. They're not, as, they're not gonna be, a, you're, if you're mixing a red and a yellow, they're not going to be as as um, true as an orange mm -hmm. uh, out of the tube. Right, but you still get that same thing. Um, so you're uh, only carrying primaries, right? Yeah, and those—that's basically all you really need mm -hmm. to get everything you want. Um, Do you carry uh, multiple pigments in each of the primaries so that you're hitting some of the Blue, you know the the, the blue greens and the yeah. blue violets. Well, that would be that would be a full you know um, play, a full palette or full color palette um, for uh, impressionist you know, painting yeah. and stuff. So, um, and that that gets to be I I do sometimes and right now I do have something similar to that. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, uh, but it gets to be, you're talking about 12 colors, and depending on the size of the tubes, you know, it can get pretty heavy. So um, I generally keep it light yeah. so, for that. But um, uh, if I'm, it, it depends. I'll have those with me if I need them or I want to use them. Right. But uh, generally I don't carry my shot. So if you just had one blue, one red, and one yellow, what would it be? Um, well, I would carry like an ultramarine blue, um, a cad red light maybe, mm -hmm. a cad red, yeah. and then um, a um, um, cad yellow light, then white and black. Yeah. So black yeah. is a modifier. So. Dynamite. That's about it. So, um, brushes wise, what it, what yeah, just you, regular, yeah. um, just regular, what do you call it? Um, coarse brushes, you know, just regular paint brushes. Hog bristle? Yeah, yeah. Hog yeah. Bristle, yeah. yeah. thanks. Um, and then uh, substrates varies. Um, panels are the best because they're light. And I usually, I usually uh, get a order um, linen uh, canvas, and then has, it's it's uh, primed with oil prime, yeah. so it's a lot brighter, sturdier, and you know nicer to paint on actually. And then mounted on a thin panel. Yeah. And if it's small, you know, most of the time you're going to do something fairly light or small. Yeah. Uh, so that's a twelve by sixteen. And, and is that a foam core panel? Yeah. Uh, and some and shop towels. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I have my Terps can here, which I use, you know, so, um, cleaning brushes and stuff. And then basically these little um, reservoirs, I have two here, but mostly is I use um, linseed oil. Linseed oil. And uh, I have two, one to keep, one for clean, cleaner mixing, and mm -hmm. you know, one gets contaminated with paint yeah. and stuff, so. Um, and that's basically it. And how about this unit? Oh, the, this is... Like this, the ultralight. Yeah, this, this is my cigar box version. Um, and then I, I made, uh, I turned it into a, uh, a shod here. 
I have a surface, an old pallet that I cut down to fit this. And then it takes a six by eight. And then I carry again three, three colors. I've got, uh, well, I've got bright red. That's a good one to use. White, uh, ultramarine blue, a uh, uh, light, uh, see, uh, yellow light, and then black. But that's about it. Um, but I see that in there uh, you've got some shorter brushes. Yeah, I, these are probably a little bit more than I usually use. But I just. Uh, Cut off the ends, and they're pretty nice brushes. They've, they've been through the course for a while, but um, and then I just cut off the ends so they fit in, and then I have my pellet knife. That's dynamite. So it's, and it's, I like this, I was, I drag this around with me on, when I know I'm gonna be taking a, a long hike to paint. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then I took this to Italy with me and uh, painted on location. So Do you sell those? No, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I might think about it, but yeah. Well, I've got, I've got some on the drawing board, but right now I'm kind yeah. of um, just not. And then it closes down. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so painting in Italy, is that the furthest you've gone uh, to do plein air painting? Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was in Ireland and then I did a little bit in France, mm -hmm. um, but I was really not as geared up for plein air painting as yeah. I am now. Yeah. And then, um, then California and Oregon coast. and. Can you tell us a bit about uh, your process? I know the paintings that are on view um, at the center are a mix of uh, plein air work and studio paintings. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, so uh, you've captured, um, you've identified a subject, you've captured a composition roughly with a viewfinder. Mm -hmm. um, you did, you mentioned some sketches. Mm -hmm. Are those done in oil, quick well, paintings, or are you drawing? Drawing. Uh, yeah. I carry a, uh, a tablet with me, um, just a small one. And then I have some charcoal with me, and then I just, I mean, they're really rough. Yeah. And they're just, well, I, they, I, they work out the composition, and and sometimes, and then I'll, I'll refer to that when I'm painting. And then what I'll do is I'll get, I'll, like I say, I work in threes. So I'll divide my, you know, canvas up into three sections, basically. And then I'll put my the most important thing on one of those thirds. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and design it after that. And then what I'll do is I'll mix um, a blue and a, black and white and get kind of a Payne's gray. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Payne's gray, sometimes I'll just use, a, I'll have a ultramarine blue or an um, raw umber with me and I'll use that. And then sketch out my composition there and then from there I'll start laying in my darks. And especially since you're outside and it's during you know, a daylight summertime, you want to capture or make sure that you delineated the shadows so that as the world turns <laughs> yeah yeah your your light will you you'll know where your light was so a lot becomes memory too so yeah. and i think that's uh what many folks would find uh the most challenging the the ever changing nature mm -hmm. of nature yeah. um whereas uh nowadays we're quite um spoiled maybe and that mm -hmm. we are all photographers with our phones and mm -hmm. that captures a moment um, and I know a lot of artists will use photographic reference and it's mm -hmm. static in there so how do you manage um, that ever-changing um, atmospheric conditions the movement of the Sun you say you knock out where the um, shadows are so that you can maintain a consistent light source throughout mm -hmm. um, do you ever respond to the change in light and make 
A tweak later? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, it's like, depending on where you are, mm -hmm. and, you know, if you're almost finished, you say, well, that's a painting for another day. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, and I've done paintings where I've had to come back the next day to, to set up to finish the painting. Yeah. Um, generally, it's at a point where it's fairly well established. So every day is going to be a little bit different. So, um, but I have enough information there that I can just, I can fill in, you know, some some spots that are need more help sure, sure and um so that's about that's about it but i'll sure. do twice because the day change of three hours and you're you know yeah. you might as well pack it in if you're not gonna um but as far as chasing they call it chasing light yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, uh i try not to um, but sometimes, you know, you get to a point, you know, you're painting and it's, it's something else happens and I thought, you know, I don't know, okay, I'll have to, you know, yeah. start painting yeah. more. You know, so, I mean, that's, you know, that, that can't happen, but uh -huh. uh, I try to um, avoid it as much as I can. And then, uh, compositionally, identifying it with the viewfinder and considering a rule of thirds situation, are there ever times that you will move a natural feature to fit mm -hmm. uh, your... Because I think a lot of people think of plein air as capturing um, uh, an environment and mm -hmm. uh, a locale with mm -hmm. great veracity. Um, is, is that not always the case? Will you will you move things around? Oh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll move something around if it helps. I, there's a great cartoon from a, a, a plain air book that I, I I can't remember the author now, but he had a cartoon and he was talking to this tree. He said, "I want to move you over there," and the tree was going, uh, you know. <laughs> so you know, so you have to do that sometimes, yeah. you know, and do yeah. a little bit, but you know. And there's all sorts of quotes, and you know, one of them I just read somewhere about nature gives you everything, but you have to decide which part of that nature you want to paint. So, and what fits into your concept or your idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I try try to to not do that too much, but sometimes you really have to. Sure. Um, do you know plein air painters that um, would be against? any type of movement or is that fairly um, universally accepted that you might have to move a tree? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, there's, you know, there's always, um, your, your idea, well, you know, I've heard different stories, you, you're an entertainer mm -hmm. and you're, you're creating something that says what you want to say, but also at the same time you want to make it a stronger composition, you want to have a a, um, you know, to bring out the real story of that scene and place. And sometimes you need to eliminate things and uh, um, never really put in things that aren't supposed to be there. And that would be probably the one thing that you wouldn't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, I haven't really run across any of that before. Yeah. So, Do you feel um, that the artist has a special place in our world today? Um, or what, what is the place of the artist? Or the, the, the mission? The, um, either yours specifically, or that you think um, artists in general? Well, um, we're all recorders of history. Um, and we, we all come out of our culture in our time it's, you know if you art history going back to you know even the early cave painters you know, they were um, painting what they saw what they knew mm -hmm. and um, some of them are very moving and all the way up through history so we it's it's important in one sense that we're doing painters are doing something that speaks to people at the time and what mm -hmm. they express, whether whatever form or medium or genre they're using. Um, but I think plein air painters 
uh, you know, if, if, you know, let's say global warming gets really out of hand and we don't have any forests anymore, and then somebody, you know, 20 years, 40 years, or whatever later, they can say, well, there used to be forests here, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, but um, this, like, for example, that, that scene there in the, the um, uh, Lake Superior, mm. um, that was all loaded up with, with uh, smoke and fires from Canada and you know, the north. So, I mean, that generally would be very bright and, you know, shiny and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you painted exactly what I was thinking of, I want to paint that smoke. And mm -hmm. so that's basically what, you know. So you're painting the day, you're painting um, the story, basically. Um, for plain air painters. Mm -hmm. But I think generally, you know, if you want to, you know, uh, there's some painters that, uh, even plain air painters that would go out and paint, you know, the riots and stuff like that, or, mm -hmm. or the um, uh, protests and stuff like that, which is, you know, part of that whole, you know, concept of artists speaking to the present mm -hmm. you know, or about the present. So, reportage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, we've chatted about how interested um, individuals can see your work here mm -hmm. at Gallery Imagine um, Where else might one see your work? Well, there I, I'm in different group shows mm -hmm. and not in any formal gallery. Yeah. Um, my website would be the best place to see it. And uh, what is your website? Uh, it's www.tomdimmickstudio.com. And, uh, and I have a, a link. If you want to buy it, you can pop on the link and I can ship it to you. All right. So, Tom, thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing your work with our community. Yeah, pleasure. It's all mine.